Hello, and welcome to my demonstration on how to create a labyrinth in three-dimensional space. I'm going to be starting in Blender and uh, drawing a three-circuit labyrinth in two-dimensional space, and then um, converting that into a 3D shape, adding grass to it, and exporting it into Unreal to uh, render that out and create a fun animation. Okay, so let's get started. I want to draw on this cube here. So I'm going to go into the orthographic view and I'm just going to add a grease pencil, a blank grease pencil. Um, I'm going to come into draw mode and make sure that I'm setting this to surface so I can draw on the surface. And I'm just going to do a, a messy um, three circuit labyrinth drawing here. Nothing perfect. The reason for that is um, because it's a natural shape, or I want it to look like a natural shape, I want it, I want the lines to be a little bit squiggly. So I'm just creating that space here in the lines so someone, a virtual person, or some kind of metahuman can possibly walk through this. Maybe even an inner animal. So. I'm just giving it enough space to do that. And there we go, a simple three-point labyrinth. And if I look at it, yeah, um, looks pretty squiggly to me. So I'm happy with that. Next, let's move this into object mode and let's get rid of this cube. And uh, what we need to do is convert this um, so we can work with it. So I'm gonna convert it first into a path. I'm gonna hide my uh, grease pencil um, collection here. Um, and then I'm going to select my path and convert that um, into a mesh. Um, I'm then gonna come into edit modes. Uh, so, sorry, select all. And then I wanna merge by distance. And this way I can get a, a cleaner shape. And that looks pretty good right there. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay, so I'm happy with this. And now, but what we need to do is create some, some surface. I'm going to go into edge mode. I'm going to go down E and I'm going to be doing this on the Z plane. I'm going to come right down and I'm going to extrude down by negative point three. Yeah, that looks right. Yeah, I want the grass to be high, but not too high. Back into object mode and let's move this down to the center. I'm going to turn snapping on. And what I want to do is just uh, snap this. So it's right in the center of the doorway opening. Perfect. Okay, so now what I need to do is uh, we need some thickness here. So the next stage is to, um, what I actually like to do here is uh, just duplicate this. And then I'm just going to hide this layer. Come up here. Um, this layer, actually, before I hide it, I should I should call it um, you know, OG Lab. Um, whoops, that's a terrible name. OG underscore lab okay and i'm just gonna hide this too and this one will be the one we're working with lab working okay so now i just want to give this geometry some thickness so i'm just gonna come over here 
and add a solidify modifier <laughs> and uh, it should automatically just give it some thickness here I'm gonna make it a complex shape and uh, sorry mode complex and then I'm gonna come up here and give it yeah a little bit maybe that's a bit too thick maybe too Perfect. I'm just going to apply this and I don't want these, um, I just, I don't want these faces at the bottom. So I'm just going to delete them. Selected, deleted, and now I just want. Oops. Okay. Now I just want to bevel. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to add other segments or in quads. Nice. Great. Now I'm just going to um, add a couple of segments. Great, and now I'm ready. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, just create a quick UV, uh, quick UVs for them. Just auto UV them quickly, because. Um, but actually, yeah, I'm going to auto UV them quickly. So yeah, select all and UV, smart UV project. Okay, and let's just look at that. Uh, go into the UV editing mode, and that looks pretty good. Okay, so now back into layout mode. Okay, so first what I want to do is just, um, I want an FBX of this. So the first thing I want to do is, I just want to export this, because uh, I just want its geometry. Um, so I'm just going to uh, grab an FBX of this, which is Labyrinth's, uh, which is the Labyrinth 3 circuit. Um, and I'm just going to export it to uh, my Blender folder. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to come in here and add some grass. And they're just going to be, it's just going to be a small amount. It doesn't have to cover the whole thing because um, asset painting on the actual geometry will happen in Unreal Engine. So, but I just want to add a little bit of light grass here. So um, I'm going to come up here and add a particle system, turn it into hair. And then take, take down the uh, hair length to about a 0 0.04, maybe even smaller, 0 0.03. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, increase the segments to eight. If we turn on advanced here, I'll get velocity um, functions. Under forces, there'll be this um, a tribute called Brown, uh, Brownian, and I'm just going to increase this by 0.5. Whoa, maybe less. 0 0.05, maybe even 0 0.02. Okay, just slight. And I just want to take down the hair length a little bit and increase the number. Great. Still, it's a little bit too wild. Zero, zero, five. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so now uh, I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Just 
directory. Even distribution. Mm -hmm. And now um, I'm going to export this hair. So what I need to do is just turn, uh, come down to our render here and um, uh, turn, uh, sorry, I wanna actually turn off our emitter here. And I wanna turn off our emitter in the viewport. Okay, great, this is exactly what I want. And now we will export this. So I'm going to come up to here, export, and we're going to choose a Lembic. So Lembic, and um, we just want the first frame. And um, I want to make sure that the selected objects and visible objects are turned on. Um, and now I will just name this Labyrinth 3 Circuit Grass. Export. Great. Okay, so now let's close this down and open Unreal Engine and bring our assets in. Okay, so now we have Unreal Engine 5 opened, and um, I have a blank level, nothing in it. Um, under the content drawer, I have some mega scans that I've downloaded. So um, if we come into window here and open um, Bridge, and um, I've already signed in here, but you'd like to, you, you would want to sign in. In my um, favorites, I've gone through the database and uh, highlighted and liked my um, my favorite assets here, and they've come up into my favorites. And then I've simply uh, downloaded them and added them to my project. Okay, so let's go to our content, and um, I just want to make a new folder, and this is going to be our FBX folder, jump in, and I'm going to add, okay, so we have the three circuit labyrinth FBX file, and I'm just gonna import it. Okay, great. And then I'm going to also create a new folder. And this will be our Alembic folder. And now I'm going to build our scene. In the Megascans folder, I have a lot of different options that I've brought in. I've brought in um, some aloes, some lilies, some different types of grasses, um, some flowers. Um, and uh, in some surfaces, some textures, I brought in some grass and some other ground stuff just so we can have some material on our geometry. First, I just want to come up to Window and in the Environmental Light Mixer. And now we're going to create a skylight, an atmospheric light, a sky atmosphere, a volumetric cloud, and a height fog. Next, we're gonna need a post-process volume. So over here, under visual effects, we can add that. And I just wanna make it um, cover the entire scene. So I'm just under details panel, I'm just gonna search for unbound and then click it true. Next, I'm gonna turn off auto exposure by just searching for exposure and turn on metering mode and then turning on apply physical camera exposure and checking it off. Next, I'm gonna turn on exposure compensation. So this is the slider that'll be used to set the exposure for the entire scene. Okay, so next select exponential high fog, scroll down in the details here and turn on volumetric fog. So next, select directional light and find volumetric scattering intensity. 
Now this is the slider that'll change your fog effect and intensity in the scene. This is the slider that will do that. Okay, this is good for now. We need to import our assets and then we can dive deeper into the lighting. So next we wanna add a shape, a ground plane. And I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger. Great. And now let's just bring in some of the assets. Oh, it brought in um, one of the other geometries that uh, the initial geometry that I made for this three circuits. So I think I can just delete that one. Okay, and let's. Pull this in and um, this looks pretty good. Um, right away, I just want to do a, a little bit of a subdivision on it, maybe even re-UV it using some of the modeling tools here. So um, I'm opening the modeling mode and um, select my model. I'm going to just come click on subdivide. Great. Mm -hmm. Just to make it a little smoother. Okay, and that looks good, so I'm going to accept it. I'm going to auto UV it if I can find. There it is, auto UV. Let it do its thing. Perfect. Now I'm going to accept that and I am ready to go. So I'm going to come back into selection mode and um, this is good. Uh, what I want to do here though in our plane is first I want to add some texturing to it. I'm going to come into our basic shape material. I'm going to come here into um, some of the materials I downloaded and uh, grab, I think I'm going to grab the wild grass and I'm just going to grab the material instance and throw it in my ground and right away obviously it's way too big. looking a lot better, but I'm going to first, just for size reference, because I want to make this uh, to human scale, I'm just going to bring in one of my metahumans that I've been working with lately. So to access that, I'm going to just come into bridge, click on my metahumans, And I'm just going to add in myself, since it's already downloaded. Just update it. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to add this to my project. And I'm just going to add my metahuman in there so we can get a sense of scale. Great. So this looks a little small. So let's make it bigger. Maybe a 100. Okay. It's definitely too big, so let's bring it down about 10, and that looks right to me. 
right. Now, um, I just want to fix the textures on the ground because they look a little bit too small now. So let's go back to that and bring it down to about 40. Save. Okay. Now I'm going to do add another material to this. I'm going to add our model. Go into it. So we're going to have to change some of the tiling. Enable tiling. And yeah, looks better. Mm -hmm. It's good for now. Save this. Okay. Okay, so now let's bring in the Alembic. Before we import the Alembic, you just have to make sure that in your plugins, you have, um, if I type in Alembic, you, you have to make sure that the, these three plugins are checked and it'll ask you to restart and restart. And now we can add our grass. Um, this is actually 90 and um, on the Y is negative one. Import it, bring it in and uh, I now should match. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, nice. So, um, let's bring the grass to life. So if we come into the grass asset and come into the groom group, just enable the width. Okay. And then I want a bit of a tip. Let me see here. Actually, let's do two and a we want to go down and scale. Okay, looks right. Very good. Okay, so I just updated my MetaHuman, and um, I have also added some more 3D plants for MegaScans in here, so I can paint them in paint them onto my meshes. Okay, so let's go to foliage mode. And in foliage mode, I want to add in all kind of the, just the grass that I want to paint in. No, no flowers yet, just grass. Um, yeah, that's good. And I have the filter static mesh on. I'm just going to select all and I'm going to drag them into here. Who's this? I'm going to now select all and I'm going to come down here and just make sure my ground slope angle is at 90. And now I want to simply randomly fill in uh, the mesh with foliage. So with fill selected, I just clicked on the geometry and it populated my scene with grass. And now I'll do the same to the labyrinth. And now I have an overgrown grassy labyrinth. So now what I'm going to do is paint some flowers in here. So I'm now going to add 
some of the ivy and the lilies, the aloe, the lady fern. In. And then I'm just going to select the ones I want to paint in. And I just make sure that the angle is at 90. And now, I don't want it to be this dense. So, with the ground slope angle at 90, I'm going to come up here and make the paint density less. And now, I'm just going to sprinkle some flowers onto the labyrinth. Flowers, some lilies, and a little bit of ribbon grass. Now you can always delete elements that you don't like. So Nothing to worry about. So I'm increase my brush size. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I want the camera to be coming from, I want the camera be, to be here, so I'm going to want a little bit of a, a road path in here. So I'm just going to come and erase, and I want to just erase some elements in here, just to have a little bit of a path. Nice. Good, and um, let's select all of these and turn them on. Okay. Now I'm just going to come in here and paint. I think the foliage is done now. So now let's set up our sequence and camera and Real. So the first thing what I need to do is to um, uh, do an automated sequence. And I think I like the, um, I like the dimensions in here. So, you know, I think we could, you know, close him out for now. We don't need to see him there. And uh, we should definitely add a sequence. Save it. So now what I want to do is I want to lay down my traps and create my camera. So uh, I'm going to come in here 
and create a new camera. I'm also going to create a new camera rig rail. Now, um, I'm just going to make sure this is on the ground. And uh, I'm going to make sure the camera is in the right place. So let's just bring the camera where the crane is. Here, the camera should be a little higher. So just by holding Alt, I can create more points. And I'm going to fix this later, so I'm just going to be doing a really rough layout of this curve, just so I can place it in there. And if I come up here, I can go to the top and turn on wireframe. And that way we can see Okay, so let's look at our, let's bring back our foliage. Let's animate our, our uh, center rail. So if I select the camera rig rail and go into details and look under my rail controls, I can move the position of the rail. So let's keyframe it. Let's move to a later frame, probably around 800, I'll make it. And let's just bring this to the end and as well. Okay. And add keyframe. Let's just See what that looks like. I'm going to come over here and split this into two. And make this my perspective. And I'm going to make this my camera. Okay, I just want to go and I just want to turn this off. So I'm going to come over here, go to editor preferences, search for camera, and turn it off. Now I just want to make sure that lock orientation to rail is checked. And now it'll follow, the rotation will follow the rail as well. It's not perfect, and we're gonna to have to tweak it, but it's pretty good. Let's take this camera and I just want to change the lensing. I'm gonna make a little bit of a wider lens, 18. Let's see what that looks like. And I want to change the aperture to five. It's still, it's, it's going way too fast. So let's start with um, getting the right speed throughout this walkthrough. So I want to look at the curves of the current position on rail. So I'm just going to come up here and I want to make this a straight curve. So I'm just going to select these two curves and we hit this button here, and now I'm going to get a nice straight curve. So we should see more of how the alt... Okay, so it's still going a lot, way too fast. So let's slow it down quite a bit. So make it probably 3,000 frames. First of all, I'm going to move this to the end. The, um, I'm going to move the out point to the end. And I'm going to move our keyframe on the end of the current position on rail to frame 3000. Pull this out. So 
sin. And I'm just gonna say um, sequence play. Okay. So now we're getting a much better movement with our rail. It's nice and meditative and slow. Um, the turns are a little bit wonky, as you can see, so we still need to do some tweaking. Um, okay. I, I think I'm going to raise the camera up slightly. It still seems a little bit too low. And I would even slow it down a little bit more. So I'm going to add on, um, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to first I'm going to make this 4,000 frames. And I'm going to bring this over here. Bring, uh, pull this out, our camera cuts, and I will also move our trim position on rail to the end. And now let's see how that movement is. Okay, yeah, it's better, even slower, great. So now I think it's just tweaking the curve, getting the curve perfect, and getting the camera up a little bit higher. So let's just go back to the first frame and connect to our camera. And I just want to make it a little bit higher. Yeah, looks good. And now if I'm going through it. I'll just be maybe even higher. Maybe one seventy. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe the rotation is a point five. So yeah, you could play around with the camera to get the right look. It is pretty narrow, so I'm still going to go back to the camera actually. I think we just need it to be a little bit wider. So I'm just going to go to the focal length and move it to 16 just to get it a bit wider. Nice. I'll turn this off and I'll go back up to top view. Actually, let's let's bring this back. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to look at where uh, and what areas does this curve need to be tweaked so I can get a better camera movement? And so um, basically you just want to just want to look and, and kind of tweak things around. So right here, for example, uh, you know, right here it's a little bit too, uh, I think this needs to be tweaked. So I'm just going to turn off the foliage so I can just focus on the camera movement. So let's turn that off and let's get in here, maybe delete this and try to try to get the curve to be a little bit more fluid. Okay, that's better. So selecting and moving the spline tangent points will add curvature to the track based on the tangent angle. Once you've tweaked these points to make it smooth, the next stage is to bring back our foliage and play it back just with the foliage to make sure that everything is moving in the right place. What I've done is I've gone down into the yaw and I've um, adjusted the yaw to move through the foliage in a way that's organic and meditative. Okay, next I want to make this scene darker, more romantic, and I want the light to be coming from a direction where it will sunset. To do that, go into directional light and I want to move the direction of the light to about negative 20. And right away we see a difference here. The sun is almost setting. Next, if I scroll down to volumetric scattering intensity, 
Um, I can scale the intensity of the light and color. I can also play with the indirectness of the light. To tweak more of the fog, um, you can go into exponential height fog, scroll down to volumetric fog, and under scattering distribution, we can play with this value here. I can tweak the rays of the fog, make them more dense or less dense. Let's keep them at 0.2. And then I have some other effects like albedo and um, emissive, but I'm going to leave them as is. And lastly, I just want to make sure in my post-process volume, if I search for lumen, I just want to make sure that under lumen global illumination that the lumen scene lighting quality is set to 2 and the final gather quality is set to 2. So this is looking pretty close. I've changed the exposure compensation to 2 and in directional light I've just changed the light to 1. Even at negative 10, this is pretty nice, actually. Okay, so with my directional light at 1 intensity, my post-process volume at 2.2, and my directional light at negative 10 rotation, I seem to be getting a very nice atmosphere vibe here. So now I think we can add some particles to give it that magical effect. So now I've added our magical particles through the Niagara system. And this is what I've achieved. So through the Niagara system, we can create some particles that emit from this mesh. Okay, so let's split this back into two and make this pane our camera view, and this one will be our perspective. And I made a Niagara system, I called it Ambers, but I'll just walk you through how I did that. So I made a new folder called Effects, and if I right click here, I can add a Niagara system. And I'm gonna choose New System from Selective Emitters, next. And I'm going to choose Fountain, And it's going to finish. Example, sorry, I usually name my Niagara systems NS underscore example. And I'll double click it to go into it. First, I want to come into the emitter properties and set this to GPU and make this fixed, and the, and the bounds are fine for now. Next, I'm going to come here into the emitter state and change this to system. So now I want these particles to spawn from the labyrinth mesh. So if I come in here and type in mesh, I'm looking for static mesh location. And under here, I'm just going to add the mesh to our source. And now you can see, well, it's hard to see, but it is coming from the static mesh. So let's just um, change the gravity to one. Um, let's lower the velocity to, it's a bit high. Um, Okay. And now I just want to um, change the lifetime to a lot longer because I want those particles to stay, but I want a random distribution of how long the particle's lifetime will be. So some will be 1, some will be 30, and it'll be a random distribution of, the, of that number. Now you can see that it's coming from the mesh. 
I also want to change the color. Not so red, but I want it to have that glow effect. Okay, that's good. I just want to play a little bit more with the velocity. Okay, I just want to make them a little slower and I want to randomize this. I want to randomize this range on the X. I also want to add a curl noise. And fix the issue. Nice. Now I just want to spawn a little bit less particles. So I'm going to go back to 90. Maybe even less. Great. Okay, that looks good for now. I'm going to compile and save. And let's put this into our scene now. Okay, so now I'm going to find our particle system and drop it into our level. And I have already sized it correctly so it matches our mesh. And this is what I've come up with here, this location. And I've scaled it to 10. And the particles now are in place. So now what I need to do is I want to enable the wind for the entire instance foliage. To do that, all I have to do is find one. To do that, all I have to do is find one material instance from the Megascans folder. And if I click on one of them and and look for find parent, double click on it. Now I have the entire system here and all I have to do is find the wind system and turn it on. Apply it and save. And now, and now we have some wind. To export this, I'm just going to click on this button here. I'm going to render an image sequence, a PNG, 24 frames per second um, in 4K. and I'm gonna save my work to this new folder. I'm just gonna save everything again. And I'm gonna capture the movie. Okay, I'm just pulling up Adobe After Effects. Okay, bringing our image sequence into After Effects, creating a new sequence, and there we have it.